times have you been in a situation where you felt things have been completely outside of your control? How many times have you been in a situation where you've wanted to take some action, but you felt that you haven't had the power or the influence to be able to do it? How many times have you been challenged about a lack of decision making because you felt that you've had no control or influence over the situation? The perceived lack of control can have an impact on how we prioritise workload and how we manage our time. Knowing the difference between the situations that you can control and those that you cannot control can help you to focus your energy and keep you and those around you more motivated. I've lost count the amount of times I've challenged people about how much control they think they have. And they say, I've got no control in my job. Or I don't have any authority. Or I don't have any decision-making power. I'm just told what to do. Once we've looked at the simple model I'm about to show you, and they have completed a self-assessment on what they can control and influence, they often realise that they have a lot more control than they think. This model is adapted from Stephen Covey's Circle of Concern and Circle of Influence. More about him later. I like to call it the Sphere of Influence. Some of you might already be familiar with it. And if you are, use this as an opportunity to reflect on what you know about it how you might have used it in the past and how you could use it now and into the future. If you're new to this model, you have the benefit of looking at it with a fresh pair of eyes and an open mind. Okay, so let's start in the centre. And here we have all of those things that are within your direct control. When asked about what they think is within their direct control, many people struggle. Some examples of the things within your control are how you choose to behave with other people, how you choose to speak, who you choose to interact with, how much time you choose to spend on something, the decisions you make, how much effort you choose to put into a piece of work or relationship building. Take some time after this lecture to think about what really is within your control and you'll be surprised. So let's look beyond what is within our direct control and look at those things that are within our influence. There are two categories of influence and the first one is direct influence. Some examples of direct influence are when you're in a business meeting and you need to influence your manager to make a decision on an action plan or you want to encourage somebody to take on a new task or responsibility, or you want your request for a pay rise to be taken seriously. You cannot control how the other person will react or respond to you, but you can certainly influence the outcome. The second category of influence is indirect influence. And this is where you need to influence others for them to be able to influence another person or situation on your behalf. For instance, you might be negotiating a new mobile phone contract with your supplier and you're trying to influence the salesperson to give you a better deal on the package that you're buying. They may not have the authority to make that decision. So they have to go to their manager and ask them for approval. Their manager is within their direct influence and your indirect influence, and you have to rely on that salesperson to help you. The amount of influence you have in these situations is reduced. The final sphere contains those things that are outside of your control or influence. I like to refer to this as gravity. Why gravity? Well, if you think about it, gravity is all around us. It's something that keeps our feet firmly to the ground. And whilst we try to influence it, everything that goes up must come down. So until the laws of physics change, we cannot control gravity and we have to live with it. Some examples of gravity are things like the strategy the organisation you work for chooses to adopt, the amount of tax that you pay as defined by your government, even the weather. 
I've seen many people wasting huge amounts of time and energy struggling and fighting against those things that are gravity items that they have absolutely no control over. How demotivating is that? If you really think about it, how much time do you waste struggling against those things that you have no control and influence over? Well, the good news is that you don't have to. After this lecture, I'd like you to reflect on something that you think is currently outside of your control and take the time to think why it might be. Is it because it's simply too big for you to handle? Is it because you don't know the right people to help you? If it's too big, how about chunking it down and taking one small aspect of it to deal with? For example, if you want to make some home improvements, but you're frustrated because you don't have the money to be able to do the things that you want to do, how about selecting one or two small things which you can complete that are within your budget so that you feel like you're starting to make some progress? This is linked to choosing your battles. It's part of human nature to want to express frustration over the things that we can do nothing about. However, that frustration doesn't disappear just because we've had a rant about it. Choosing your battles, choosing the small things that you can do something about, can help you to feel like you're making progress and feel a little bit more empowered and motivated. There's also something here about the freedom that you get from acceptance. Acknowledging that you have no control over something allows you to move on from it, enabling you to focus on the things that you can do something about. One final thing for you to think about in this particular lecture is that one person's gravity is within somebody else's control. And this can often come as a result of where you sit within the hierarchy of an organisation or where you're placed in terms of the knowledge that you have. As a junior member of an organisation, I may not be able to control or influence how an organisation's strategy is defined. However, if I, I'm a senior vice president and I sit on the board, it's something that's absolutely within my control and influence. So in these situations, as a junior member of the team, how could I grow my control and influence? I may choose one element of the strategy that I'm passionate about. I might use my network to help me to get in contact with people who know somebody who sits on the board. I might book some time in their diaries to meet with them and to influence them. This particular example may not resonate with you because it's all about choosing battles that you know you can fight and which give you the energy to keep going. Remember to start on the small things that you know you can do something about. Your control and influence will grow and you and the people around you will feel much more energised and motivated to focus on those things that can make a difference. Before moving on to the next lecture, take some time now to complete the related activity and reflect on those things that you can change that are within your control and influence.